Hey everyone, Cynthia here with The Nameless Homestead, and today I'm gonna to show you how to weather or castrate your bucklings. But before we get into that, I wanted to talk to you guys about the goal that we're trying to hit by January 1st of 2020. That is when our channel becomes one year old, and I would really love to hit 1,000 subscribers by that date. We're more than halfway there at over 600 as of today. So if you like our video, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button to let me know that this is the kind of content you would like to see more of from us. Without further ado, let's actually get to why we're here today though, and that is learning how to castrate your weathers. This is one of those things that is a necessary evil. Um, not all males get to have the right to procreate, unfortunately, in the homestead life. You have to be very selective with which bucks you're choosing to keep active in your herd. And not all bucks are going to fit everyone's breeding program. So some of them do need to be castrated so you don't have unwanted pregnancies. Every homesteader with goats on their homestead and who is breeding goats should definitely be intentionally learning this skill. And the first thing that we need to do when we go to research how to learn how to do this is to make sure that we have our vocabulary. Sorted. So if you didn't know, a weather is the term for a castrated male goat as being either a juvenile or an adult. An adult male goat is called a buck and a juvenile male goat that is intact is called a buckling. The process of castrating a male goat is called weathering and there are different ways to weather a male goat. You can use banding tools to band the testicles you can also use a burdizzo, burdizzo, I always fail the pronunciation of that name, um, which is using a clamp to essentially uh, crush the veins and structures leading to the testicles. Or you can also choose surgical castration, um, but that's not frequently advised because goats really don't do well under anesthesia. And castration or using a burdizzo is a lot simpler of a process to do. Uh, I do not use a burdizzo, I band. This is the probably easiest, safest, most foolproof way to get the job done. Uh, it takes all of five seconds and it's not nearly as gruesome as it sounds. Basically, you take the testicles through this band to the point where it's up close to the body and then you close the lever and the ring pops up, pops off, while the testicles would then be through this tiny little hole, all squeezed in, and the bulk of the testicles below the hole. What this does is it cuts off the blood supply to the testicles, causing them to go numb very, very quickly. And then that once that blood supply is cut off, they will just shrivel up and fall off in a few weeks. No muss, no fuss, 99.9% .9 of the time. Of course, there are always some risks to every procedure and things can go wrong, but it's very infrequent. And when things do go wrong, it's generally very easy to get taken care of. But we'll get to that towards the end of the video in the aftercare segment of this explanation. Now that we have a general understanding of the process of what banding is, I'm gonna show you the two tools that I have and how to apply a band to a bander and a little bit more of a close-up of how they work. So these are the two banders I have. I have a large bander and a small bander. The reason why I have two is because I actually go around from farm to farm or homestead to homestead and I band sheep and goats for other people or I help them with that. And so I use the large bander on larger breed animals or animals that are 12 plus weeks old when I band them because they tend to be a little more well endowed. This smaller one is fantastic for the eight to 12 week age group in most goats or sheep. You might have to go for the bigger one if those particular animals are quite well endowed, every animal's a little bit different, or just for smaller breeds in general, like your pygmies and Nigerians. Um, it's very unlikely that you would ever need a bander of this size. They're inexpensive, generally under $20. You can get them online, you can get them at most farm supply stores. This bander comes with these little green donut-shaped rings, and this bander these ones are a little less rounded, which I actually like more 
than these ones, honestly, because these can often roll up and that's kind of annoying. Whereas the hard edge on these bands tends to prevent it from rolling up the tines on the bander. Go away, Mr. Fly. Shoo. So to, I also prefer this bander and kind of wish they made a smaller version of it as well, because you can see this one stays in the open position. You close it by using this lever. Whereas for this bander, you have to keep continuous pressure holding it open, which gets a lot more difficult once you actually have a rubber band on it, especially for a person that has hand issues like I do <laughs> and nerve issues. This can be kind of difficult to use. So if you have arthritis or if you have nerve issues or anything else or joint issues like I do, this style of bander is going to be your best friend compared to this guy, especially starting out when you're a little bit slower at banding. You just take your donut and roll it down the tines like so. Ugh. Hold it open and there you go. You would then, the process is to get the testicles through the bander, close it, and then pop the bander away, leaving the band behind. The large bander works the same. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky with this one to get the bands on compared to the small blue one, but it's also, they generally stay on the tines better, even though the tines are shorter. I think it's really because of that, the flat rubber edge there rather than the rounded rolled edge. This makes it so much easier because once you have it open, it stays open. So yeah, I do definitely prefer this guy in general, but it's not going to be very appropriate for really small animals, eight weeks or under, hopefully, and no one is doing the banding under eight weeks, or for your pygmies or Nigerians. I have not seen a smaller bander in this style or type. If anyone knows of one that is for sale that is of this type, shoot me a link. Now we have one more thing to discuss before we actually get into the meat and potatoes of this show and actually band a buckling. And that is to talk about the age in which you should band a buckling. The gold standard for this is eight to 12 weeks plus. And there's a very good reason for this. It's because if you remove the testicles very young, I've literally seen some weathers that were banded at like two weeks old. <laughs> then those boy hormones are by and large removed and the urethra will not have gone through enough development to be mature. Now this can cause an issue because goats, if their feed and their calcium phosphorus ratios are off, uh, can easily develop bladder stones. And what happens when you have an underdeveloped urethra and bladder stones that need to exit, well, they end up getting blocked or much higher risk of becoming blocked and unfortunately that is probably one of the top killers of weathers. Now the exception to this rule and this age in which you should band your goats, um, anything after 8 to 12 weeks, of course the exception to that is animals that are being raised for meat. Their lifespan is generally so short that it doesn't come up and it's not really going to be a significant risk or likelihood of happening. But if you intend on retaining weather as a pet or selling weathers for pets or for pasture uh, companions or to graze your acreage down, um, you're definitely going to want to wait or buy an animal that has been weathered post 8 to 12 weeks old. It will significantly reduce their risk factors and significantly extend their lifespans. Now with all of that gabbing out of the way, we're ready to actually get down to business. So I'm gonna go get my husband who is super excited about this job. So he can be my helper in holding the goat so I can demonstrate for you guys well how this process is actually done in real time. Okay, who's gonna be our first victim? I think we do Cooper first. Hi baby, we're gonna be best friends still I hope after this, huh? All right, daddy, you wanna pick him up? They'll still like you. They won't like me very much after this. He's such a good boy. Yes. You remember the uh, position to assume? Pretty much. All right, I'm gonna put this on the tripod. Hi. Okay, the so part we that. hate the most, which is assuming the position. Having a helper to have a goat sit in their lap um, is very, very helpful. 
because it allows uh, gravity to do half the work for you. So the best way to hold him is to have his legs on your legs and to grab a front leg and a back leg in your left hand around the ankle portion. This is easier to do when they're smaller. Up into the, there we go. Yeah, the crookier, so. Yep. Yep, I know, yeah. I, know. I know, buddy. It's and like, I don't like this. There you go. And then if when you spread your legs, ah. oh, is he gonna be too big for you to grab the back feet and um, the front feet at the same time? Well, what I can probably do is. Yeah, you can do, honestly, whichever well, way is most comfortable not, for you. I can't get the other leg this way. That's okay. But well, basically what we need to do is any position or anything works just fine. But as long as we have the testicles allowing gravity to come down, because what you don't want is for the testicles to go up too close to the body. It makes it difficult to get the band around the neck of the testicles right here. And it can also make it so that you only get part of a testicle or only one testicle through the band. We just saw you get a cryptoid, which is not fun. So I'll be able to hold this leg, mm -hmm. and then I'll be able to hold the front half. I think you'll be fine. He's just the one leg. One. He's a strong one, but this will be over Let's nice and quick. Yep. All right, and we're going to use the big boy bander on him because he's a the few months boy. old. A little older than he should be. Uh, okay, so the best way, especially if you're working with big boys whose testicles feel like they're a little too big to go through the bander, is to grab the tip of the scrotum. <laughs> I know, mister. This is longer because of the fact you... In fact that we're filming. Grab the tip of the testicles through the bottom of the band because once you get the scrotum through, the testicles will want to pop through at the same time. I'm gonna get this a little closer. All right. True? <coughs> Nothing has <coughs> even happened yet. <coughs> Pull the test the scrotum through. One testicle just went through all by itself. <coughs> Up over the neck, make sure that you do not have any nipples below the band. Nipples need to be above the band. Testicles need to be below the band. Right there along the neck. Release your clamp. I know, mister. And there we go. I'm sorry, that one was a little bit rough. Two testicles below, two teats above. All done. What do we think? What do we do to you, Muffin? Two seconds after banding and we're just fine. We're mostly annoyed about the fact that we were held in that annoying position. Huh, little one? Huh, Koopy Coops? You want some grain? He's like, I need a snack after that mess. Do that to me. Here you go, dude. No pig grain. Not this one? Oh, no. I was talking to him about no pig grain. You. <gasps> Snacks? Oh. Snacks for the baby. All right, our little guy is now banded and just got kicked out of the milking parlor and is enjoying some hay with his herd mates. So now is a great time to talk about aftercare. And truly, there really isn't any. The best thing that we can do at this point is leave the entire thing alone. If we go and get too hands-on, inspect it. You can break loose the dying testicles, which is essentially like picking at a scab too early, which can of course lead to fly strike and any other issue that comes around with having an exposed open wound, exposed to homestead elements like insects, dirt, and bacteria. So truly, leave the entire site alone. Maybe check on it in a couple of weeks just to see how things are doing just by lifting a leg and putting eyeballs on, hands off. It's very uncommon for any complications to happen with banding. Uh, what can happen infrequently is, like I said, the testicles can try to start falling off too soon. Maybe they were playing too rough. It got snagged on something or someone was a little too vigorous in checking things. If that does happen, it's just important to make sure that the castration band is still on the testicle portion that's left because more often than not, it's just, it becomes degloved. The more interior portion of the testicles not having fully been ready to drop off yet. Uh, in that case, the best thing to do is to use a iodine spray to sanitize the area as best as you can and to keep flies off of the area. And sometimes in those situations, a vet check is necessary, but it's very unlikely to happen. And that pretty much wraps up our video. Let's go check on the buckling and see how he's doing. And with that, we'll sign off. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified the next time that we upload. Thanks for watching. Hi, baby. Are you mad at me now? Did I torture you? No, you're not mad at me. You still love me? Oh, Coop.
Scooby Coops, I love you too. Oh, she's a good baby.